Mine is like a committee with an open membership. It seems that anybody has the right to say anything. And at the meetings, no one ever checks credentials to see who's coming in with what kind of intention. Because if you sit and watch the thoughts that go through your mind, you begin to realize that a lot of them don't come from you at all. They come from outside. Ideas you picked up from who knows where. Your parents, friends, TV, teachers, radio, magazines. And you never can really be sure that the places where these voices came from really meant you well. And yet there they are in the committee. And a lot of the voices have different desires behind them. Like people who wield political power and don't show themselves publicly. And so that makes the voices very strong and many times very difficult to deal with, because their arguments go underground. The real issues are very rarely brought to the surface. And it's our task to change the committee. Fortunately, you can take advantage of that open membership by bringing new members in, members you want on your side. The desire for peace, the desire for true happiness. That's buried someplace in there. You can bring out that desire. And you can arm it with concentration, you can arm it with all the techniques you need. to help strengthen it. And as that desire gets stronger, then you begin to set down some rules, some parliamentary procedures. One, that you're not going to listen to any voices in the mind that really don't lead to happiness. That's an important one. That's the beginning of wisdom. And then you make a rule that if anything is proposed in the mind, you want to know what the consequences are going to be. And then you learn how to strengthen the committee members that are on your side. This is important. This is why we have this practice of concentration, so we can take the observing part of the mind and really strengthen it, create a place, both in the body and in the mind, where you can stand and watch things, so that you don't easily get fooled by moods, desires, as they come in and pretend to be pushing this when they're actually pushing something else. We're making a really poor argument, but making it with a lot of force. All the tricks that you hear, you see in committees really come out of the mind. And this is one of the reasons why people who are very greedy or very angry or very deluded can be really slick debaters. Because that's the kind of debate that goes on in their mind all the time. And what you've got to learn how to do is be a bit more slick yourself on the side of true happiness. And the practice of concentration is good. Because on the one hand, it creates a sense of ease. You can show the mind that practicing the Dharma is not all hardship. In fact, there's a sense of ease that really goes deep down inside if you allow it to seep through the body, and let the breath work through the body, around all the knots of tension. It feels really good to be right here. And secondly, you've got that place where you can observe, as I said. Watch things as they come, watch them as they go, and realize that it really is a committee in here. There's lots of different perspectives. Many times one thought seems to consume the entire mind. But as you develop your concentration, you begin to realize you've got at least one little spot where you can watch events without having to get involved. 
That's your strength. So try to develop that strength and keep it going, this observer that doesn't get swept up with passions. It doesn't get carried away by fancy oratory. Just watch what's going on. When you regard this committee as just as that, it helps you disidentify. No matter how strong the feeling is, you don't have to identify with it. This is one of the Buddha's most important teachings. If you had to identify with everything that came up in your mind, you'd go crazy. You've got the choice. Learn how to exercise that choice wisely. This is why we practice concentration. Now, if the mind has trouble settling down, Do your best to look and see, okay, what are the actual problems that are getting in the way? Don't let them sneak around and stay out of sight. When you want to meditate but the mind doesn't settle down, ask yourself, okay, why won't you settle down? And then wait and watch to see what the answer is going to be. And the mind will be quiet, it'll pretend like it hasn't heard. Or that the other desires are not there. But if you make a rule, okay, if I don't hear anything, I'm going to go ahead and meditate. At some point they've got to come out. And then you can see them from what they are, and then you can deal with them. Is this a desire that really is in your own best interest? Where is it going to lead? Then use the powers of your concentration, the powers of your discernment to make sure you don't you're not swayed by any desires that are really contrary to the Dharma, contrary to your own true happiness. This way you bring some order into the commu committee. You've got some parliamentary procedure, you check credentials. When you can bring some order into the discussion, you find that it really does start getting more and more in line with your real aspirations, more and more in line with your real happiness. And this way the committee can start getting united, not united in some crazy passion, but united with wisdom. Concentration, mindfulness, all the good qualities start working together. So this is a pr process that you can do both while you're meditating and in the course of your day. Don't think that when you meditate you can't think at all. Many times there are issues that have to be dealt with. And in dealing with them, you're getting the mind in better and better shape, so it finally can settle down. And don't think that training the mind is something you do only when you've got your eyes closed. This is what the training is for, so you can use it all the time to learn good habits. Try to maintain those good habits, no matter what you're doing. Even in situations that seem very far away from meditation, you find that you've got to maintain your proper form. There's a book on swimming technique that says even when you put, let up in your practice, the important thing is that you maintain good form all the time. That's the same with the mind. These rules of parliamentary procedure. Have to be followed no matter what. Any voice that recommends things that don't lead to real happiness should not be allowed to speak in this in the in the meeting. Shouldn't be allowed to have any force any influence. That has to be your basic law. And 
and just bring in that law and apply it, you make a huge difference in your life.